Okay, in this video I would like to talk about Taylor's Theorem and Lagrange's Remainder Theorem. And this has to do with Taylor polynomials and approximating Taylor polynomials. So really the, the meat of what we're going to talk about is using Lagrange's Remainder Theorem to, to determine our, our maximum error is what we're going to do here. So we're going to approximate sine of 0 0.1 using a third degree Taylor polynomial. And again, we're going to determine its accuracy. So just at random picking the number 0 0.1, at random picking a third degree Taylor polynomial. So before we do that, I just want to uh, write out or, or show Taylor's theorem and the remainder theorem just because I'm going to refer to it a couple times. So Taylor's theorem says the following, and you, it, I'm sure if you've seen Taylor uh, polynomials, uh, you, you will recognize some of this stuff. So it says f, if f is a differentiable function through order n plus 1 and an interval i containing c, then for each x and i there exists some value z between x and c so that the following holds. So the first part again is going to look kind of familiar. So we're doing this, this Taylor series approximation. So we have f of x equals f of c plus f prime of c multiplied by x minus c plus dot dot dot. We're going to go up to, uh, so it looks like we're taking a, an approximation of degree n, so we'll have to go to the nth derivative. Again, plug in c over n factorial uh, multiplied by x minus c raised to the n. So you can think about this as being the approximation part. Okay, so that's what we're going to uh, approximate our function with. Well, then it says you still have some remainder. You've got some stuff left over. Well, this stuff left over, this remainder, satisfies the following. It says that the remainder r sub n of x is going to equal the n plus first derivative of f evaluated at c divided by n plus 1 factorial multiplied by x minus c raised to the n plus first power. So again, this might look a little hairy. Uh, I think it'll make much more sense after we go through the example. So again, just think, hey, I'm going out to some power of n. That's going to be my approximation. We've got some stuff left over that, you know, since it's, it's not in there, we've clearly got an error. Well, okay, so we, we have a formula for that remainder. And the useful result here, this Lagrange error bound, that you'll often see in textbooks is this result. So this is the Lagrange error bound. I didn't write that down. Maybe I should have. It says the absolute value of r sub n of x, that's going to be less than or equal to the absolute value of x minus c raised to the power of n plus 1 divided by n plus 1 factorial. And we multiply that by the maximum of the absolute value of f raised to the power of n plus 1 of z. This max uh, of the absolute value of the n plus first derivative of f evaluated at z, that's just going to represent the maximum value of that uh, uh, derivative function evaluated at z, where you take z between x and c. So again, all it really says is you're trying to do, you're just trying to find a maximum value for, uh, for that remainder. Okay, so. Again, you use, typically when I've seen these problems, it's either when you're trying to do some sort of estimation, like in this example, some, some amount of accuracy, you know, you'll see a question again, like how accurate is it? And other times you'll actually show that that Maclaurin series is valid, but here we're going to show the accuracy. So, okay, let's try to make some sense out of all that, that gobbledygook, and then I'm probably going to refer back to some of that stuff as well. So let's see if we can't make some sense out of it. That all sounds very technical there at the beginning, doesn't it? So again, we're going to approximate. We're going to approximate sine of 0 0.1 using a third degree Taylor polynomial. So a little sloppy handwriting there. I'm just trying to get it out. Okay. So recall that the. Um, we're going to use a Maclaurin series expansion here. The Maclaurin series expansion is sine of x is equal to the summation from n equals 0 to infinity. We've got negative 1 raised to the power of n divided by 2n plus 1 factorial, and that's multiplied by x raised to the 2n plus 1. So again, I, I'm assuming that you are familiar with this, this uh, Maclaurin series expansion for sine x. And again, a Maclaurin series is still just a, a Taylor series. It's that special case where it's centered at 0. So our, our c value in this case is going to be 0. That's where we're centering it at. Okay, so we're just going to basically start expanding 
this summation out until we get to degree until we get to degree three. Okay, so notice if I plug in n equals zero, I would have negative one to the zero, I would have one factorial, I would have x to the first. Well, all of that just simplifies down to x. If I plug in n equals one, notice I would have negative one to the first, that's gonna give me a negative. I would have a three factorial in the denominator. And then if I plug in n equals one, I'm gonna have x to the third power. So boom, um, there we go, we've now got our, our third degree. So this is gonna be our uh, third degree polynomial for sine of x. Um, now, we could be careful, we could actually say, you know, it's correct to say that sine of x equals x minus x to the third over three factorial plus the remainder. So just like we had a second ago, we had all of this stuff plus the remainder. Well, we went up to degree three, so we've got this, this remainder left over. So we're going to have plus r sub three of x. Okay, so that's going to be the expansion here for sine x. Now again, our, our whole goal here is just to approximate this value. Well, we could write this one more time. We could write this as x minus x to the third over three factorial. Now we can just substitute in. So again, we said that r sub n of x, we, we can compute that using this formula. So if we replace our n with three, it says we should have so n plus one, it says we should take the fourth derivative of our function, evaluate it at z. In the denominator, we would have n plus one factorial or four factorial. So again, since we're using a Maclaurin series, in this case, our c value is zero. So I can just drop the c. So then we would be left with x raised to the fourth power. So again, our whole goal, all we're trying to do is just to really approximate this, this final term. And we should emphasize again here, because since we're using a Maclaurin series, c is equal to zero, the, the value we're going up to is 0 0.1. So this z value is trapped in the interval between zero and 0 0.1. So that'll be a, a fact that we have to use here in just a second. Now if we use this approximation, okay, so this is the easy part, you just, to approximate it, right, we just go out to degree three. So sine of 0 0.1, it says that's gonna be roughly equal to, we'll just substitute in 0 0.1 minus 0 0.1 raised to the third over three factorial. And if you do the arithmetic, this ends up being 0 0.0998. 3, 3. Okay, so this is our approximation. We've now approximated sine of 0 0.1 using a third degree Taylor polynomial. That's the easy part. Now the, the, the kind of the stuff that's left over to do is to figure out that error, figure out that, that, that how, how far off this, this could possibly be. Okay, so this value, r sub 3 of 0 0.1, that can be bounded. we can say, what is our error in this case? And that's where we're gonna come back to using this formula. Okay, so now we're gonna start bounding things. Well, r sub three of 0 0.1, um, that's gonna be greater than zero. And one reason why we can say that is notice that we're using the function, uh, we're, we're talking about um, um, well, let's be careful here. Let me, let, me, let me say one other thing here first. So r sub 3 of 0 0.1. So now let's compute that. So we said that's going to be the, the n plus 1 derivative. So that's going to be the fourth derivative evaluated at z over 4 factorial. Again, we said our c values 0, so that's going to be x to the fourth. Well, okay, so that means we have to compute the fourth derivative of our function. So the function we're working with here is sine x. Its first derivative would be just cosine x. The second derivative is gonna be negative sine x. The third derivative is gonna be negative cosine x. And our fourth derivative, we're gonna be back at sine x. So, this is gonna be the same thing 
So our fourth derivative evaluated at z. So we said the fourth derivative of the function, that's going to be just sine x. So now we're applying, or we're evaluating sine of z over 4 factorial. And then we've got this value. Now, our 0 0.1, that's our x value. That's what we're plugging in here. So that's our x value. So we're going to have now 0 0.1 raised to the fourth. All right, so now at this point, again, z is on this interval. It's between 0 and 0 0.1. So on that interval, sine is positive. So we know that this quantity is going to be strictly greater than 0. Well, on that interval from 0 to 0 0.1, sine on that interval is going to be between 0 and 1 strictly between 0 and 1. So um, on the interval from 0 to 0 0.1, I claim that sine of any of those numbers will be less than, sine of any value will be between 0 and 1. So we can now say that this is actually strictly less than, since sine of z is less than 1 but greater than 0, we can say that this, this quantity in the middle is just simply smaller than 0 0.1 raised to the fourth over four factorial. And if you simplify this, I got 0 0.1 to the fourth over four factorial. I got this value to be roughly equal to 0 0.000004. So five zeros and then a four. This is now, this is the error. This is how much you're off by. So what you're doing again, just to go through this one more time, because this is kind of the important part is we're just looking at now, since we used a third degree Taylor polynomial, we take one extra derivative, we substitute in the value that we're approximating. So, okay, we, we took our, our fourth derivative, we got sine. The value we're approximating is going to be 0 0.1. So my notation's a little sloppy here. I should have had 0 0.1 here as well. So it says basically just take the derivative, um, Plug in your value, and again, you're really trying to think about how can you bound whatever that function is over the interval you're given. A lot of times you'll be given a trig function, sine or cosine, so you can just bound it by 0 and 1. A lot of times you'll be given a function like e to the x, and, um, you know, or, or, or depending on the, the function, you can usually bound them pretty easily. Uh, uh, you see e to the x's a lot as well in these. So last but not least, we're, we're, well, we're pretty much done now. So we've got that, we said that sine of 0 0.1, we computed that using our, our approximation. We got 0 0.099883. But we said sine of 0 0.1, we said that that's going to be equal to the approximation we got. plus the remainder that we computed. But that's going to be less than 0 0.099883. And we said the remainder that we get when we evaluate it at, again, 0 0.1. That's what we just computed. And we said that that's going to be, that's going to be less than this value 0.000004. So that's now going to be our solution. So so it says sine of 0 0.1 is larger than the approximation value we got, and it's going to be smaller than the approximation plus the maximum error involved. So if you add those two values together, we'll just get 0 0.099888, and if we add 3 and 4, we'll get 7. So it says sine of 0 0.1 is going to be bounded between those two values. So I'm happy to do another one of these because I think the notation and everything can get a little confusing and a little, uh, a little hairy at some point. So if you want to see another one of these, by all means, just let me know. I would be happy to do another one. Again, the moral of the story, whatever degree you're approximating, you take one derivative higher. And then you're just trying to, to really, you're just trying to think, you know, what's the maximum value of that, of that derivative over that interval? And once you have that, that can compute your, your error. So 
All right, again, I hope this one makes some sense. I, I, would, I think these are a little bit confusing, at least I used to when I first saw them, you know, when I first started doing these. So certainly feel free to post questions. Hopefully either myself or someone else can help you. And definitely let me know if you want to see some more examples because I'd be happy to do it.